Hello and welcome to the Connotation Points video snark. I'm currently reading through The Betrothed by Kira Cass. This is not the first video of this book, so I'd recommend that you watch the other videos before you start this. Links are posted below. Chapter 11 After my parents left, Nora and Delia Grace spent the rest of the day testing me on what I'd learned thus far. For every answer I got right, I got to take a bite of pie, so naturally I was starving by dinner time. That's uh, one way to say that Hollis is stupid. Smile. None of this matters as much as you keeping Jameson happy. I'm pretty sure that Jameson would be happy if his future bride would not spark an international incident because she is so dumb. Hollis also says some stuff about Jameson having told her that the only thing he wanted is for Hollis to be herself. And I feel like there's something to be said about why marriages for royalty were often arranged. Not just for political stuff, but because I look at Hollis and I'm like, Guys, do you really want a girl who is struggling to remember basic information about her own country to rule all of you? She muses about the entire thing and feels like she's right to be with Jameson, that only an idiot would pass up the chance to marry the king. When she goes to Jameson for dinner, she expresses how much she didn't remember and hopes that Quentin will not question her too much about it. Jameson says that Quentin is rather scary, but he had to get over it when he became the king. What did you, of all people, have to fear? You're the king. Which is circling back to a point that I made in an earlier video that I'm not convinced that Hollis even knows what a king is. All Hollis seems to think that kings do all day is be rich, drink mead, host parties, and go to war. Jameson explains to her that he's always been afraid of Quentin. Not only is his physical appearance very villain-like, but he acts in a way that suits his appearance. Jameson doesn't really go into a whole lot of details, but says that Quentin is always seeking revenge, but can't answer against who or why. He goes on to say that the political situation between his father and Quentin was insanely tense and that it was only Jameson's mother who prevented it from becoming an all-out war. However, Jameson feels like the situation might spiral out of control and he will be forced to go to war with Quentin soon. But enough of that silly, uh, what's it called, that silly plot. Jameson has a present for Hotless, which I'm sure is going to be painfully stupid, but we're going to read about it in the next chapter. Chapter 12. Jameson leads a blindfolded Hollis somewhere with the help of Nora and Dilia. It has a strong Beauty and the Beast vibes, but I know that I'm setting myself up for disappointment because I'm not even convinced that Hollis can even read. Anyway, he takes her to the Queen's rooms, where the Queen usually receives people for her own business. He says that the rooms are hers, even though Hollis says that it's too much. When you are Queen, you shall be drowning in jewels and gifts and praise until death, and I suspect for many years after, he added with a wink. I know that I've talked about how Hollis seems to only see how handsome that Jameson is and ignores things like him being the literal king, but at the same time, as I read lines like this, I can't help but feel like Jameson only looks at how pretty that Hollis is and he likes her because, no really, I literally don't know, he seems to like her because she's an empty-headed idiot. He doesn't care that she can't remember things about her own country and that if left to her own devices, Hollis would probably run the country into the ground for a party. Anyway, Jameson says that he's going to have all of Hollis's things moved in right before Quentin arrives tomorrow. He bids Hollis good night before he leaves. The second that he's gone, Dillian and Nora begin jumping up and down in excitement. The three of them explore the place, which is really more of an apartment. A room for receiving guests, the actual bedroom, what's basically a walk-in closet. Hollis is so overwhelmed by everything that she needs to sit down. She says that it's all happening very fast. The visiting king and queen are arriving tomorrow, and she's a going to be expected to entertain the queen. She's also being moved into the rooms. Nora seems to think that some sleep will do Hollis a world of good. However, Hollis is surprisingly the one with any sense. Even though the linens were changed and lit candles put into the room, there is no fire in the fireplace and no wash pitcher. Plus, somebody would need to go get all of Hollis's things. It's fit to be shown to Hollis, but not for her to stay in right now. However, Delia doesn't exactly see it that way. The king will see it as a slight. You've been given the second best lodgings in the entire palace and you want to leave them for a handful of personal items? Have you lost your senses completely? This isn't about stuff, as you put it. This is about the rooms not being fit for somebody to actually live in them just yet. It honestly seems easier just to go back to Hollis's rooms for one more night than for Delia to start a fire. And why is it that Hollis is the one talking sense and Delia is insisting that everything is fine? It's usually the other way around. Again, Hollis muses on how fast that all of this is happening, even though it sounds like she's been courted by Jameson for months now. 
Nora had gone to Hollis's room to fetch her nightdress and slippers and also brought back a couple of other small things. They get Hollis ready for bed, and they remark upon the rooms where the queen's ladies-in-waiting would sleep. There's plenty of space for a lot of other girls. Hollis gets into the four-poster, where she can't see the maids that were called in to help finish setting up the room for the night. She can't sleep, and only just listens as Nora and Dilly get ready for bed and then go to sleep themselves. Then she slips out of bed to go on some late-night misadventure, and I'm almost positive that it's going to finally introduce Silo, whatever her name is, as the other love interest. Thanks for listening to our book snark on YouTube. New videos are up every Monday. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss anything. Also, while you're waiting for the new video next week, be sure to catch up on my other video series. If you're already caught up with that, then you can head over to Tumblr for my main book snarks, always free and updated daily. People who support me on Patreon also have early access to my daily snack, but also bonus snack that isn't up anywhere else. People who donate to me either by supporting me on Patreon or by making a one-time donation via PayPal or Coffee also get shoutouts in my videos. Thank you so much to Don and Phoebe for supporting me already. Be sure to join my Patreon or donate to hear your name next week. Also, if you want to read some of the stuff that I've published, and you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have 19 erotic short stories, one short story collection, one full-length novel. Yes, that's right, I've published a new short story. I hope that you guys like aliens. Links for everything will be posted below. See you next week, guys.